Since its launch, we have seen some incredible images from JWST. But that doesn't mean we're getting used to the stunning scenes it continues to produce. In particular, this new image of the Orion Nebula took my breath away, and I'm really excited to see such a gorgeous new image. I love the colours, the textures, the stars and the gas. What's not to love here? Orion the Hunter is one of the most recognisable constellations in the sky, but just look at how much we're able to zoom into it with JWST. The nebula is found below the belt, and the famous Hubble image of it is positively enormous compared to the JWST one. Here, James Webb is really focusing on the part of the nebula that we call the Orion Bar. If I didn't know any better, I'd almost say this image resembles part of the planet Jupiter. The two colours of dust standing off against each other reminds me of the bands of cloud on Jupiter. We're actually looking at a near-infrared image of the dust and gas of the Orion Bar, accented with gorgeous wisps and trails all over the image. It feels 3D and textured, and of course it's also punctured with a few stars in between us and the nebula that shine bright enough to get the eight-pronged diffraction spikes that every JWST image contains. We can actually go even deeper still though. As well as as near-infrared imaging, we also have mid-infrared data from the MIRI instrument, which is even better at peering deep into dusty regions, and we can continue to zoom in. This lets us see the dust even clearer, but why stop here? Keep zooming and we find a young star system with a protoplanetary disk. That's the ingredients for planets, but before they've had a chance to form. What's incredible is that we have zoomed so far into the sky, but this protoplanetary disk is still enormous. Within the disk, JWST was able to detect a new compound in space for the very first time. Known as methylcation, it's an important discovery because this molecule aids in the formation of even more complex carbon-based molecules. So it could be an essential ingredient if carbon-based life is ever going to develop anywhere other than Earth. That in itself is a pretty amazing discovery, and it's made all the more intriguing by the fact that the molecules in the protoplanetary disk are different to what we typically expect. In particular, the team couldn't find any signs of water in the disk, which is normally abundant in them. Why and how these differences are occurring is unknown, but I'll update you right here if we hear anything more about it. This actually isn't the first Orion image from JWST either, so let's take a look around. We have this delightful green image. I don't know why they chose green for it, but those textures and wisps are incredible. Plus, there is a frog down here, so this is an obvious 10 out of 10 for me. This is an older version of the bar, where they've chosen different colours and the processing doesn't seem quite as polished. But if you prefer the colours here, then definitely let me know that in the comments below. Delightfully, the team that made this image did a load of my work for me, and they've labelled some interesting things in the image, including the nearby star here and this gorgeous young star in a dusty cocoon. So thanks team. They also put it side by side with the same section of the nebula as seen by Hubble, so we can see the differences in how these two incredible telescopes see the universe. Hubble sees mostly invisible light, just like our eyes, while JWST is an infrared telescope that's better at staring into dusty regions of space, making it perfect for imaging nebulae. There is also a comparison with Spitzer, which was the best space-based infrared telescope before JWST. I mean, just look at this resolution upgrade we've had. Space isn't a competition, but JWST is winning. I actually want to end with a black and white image I found that does an incredible job of making me feel very lonely. This shows another protoplanetary disk in the Orion Nebula. It looks tiny and alone, hanging in what looks like a totally empty landscape. The thing is, this disk system is 300 times bigger than the Earth-Sun distance, and it is so alone. That's the true scale of the universe and how isolated systems, much like our own, truly are. It's why it will be so hard to really explore the galaxy, making me feel pretty lonely, but also feel hopeful that one day our distant ancestors might solve these problems and find a way to visit some of the things we're ogling at in these gorgeous images. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you're new. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!